Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. I want to talk about some of the more advanced LangGraph features, focusing here on waiting for user input. So sometimes we have a graph, and at a certain point in our graph, we want to explicitly get feedback from a user. This could be clarifying questions in the case of like a chatbot or an assistant. Um, but the point is we want to extract this information from the user at very particular points in our graph and add it to our graph state. So that's kind of motivation. Now this sits within a broader set of human in loop kind of capabilities within LangGraph. We already did a video on breakpoints, which basically allow you to, to basically stop execution of your graph at a certain node. And this ability to wait for user input builds on top of the idea of breakpoints. Now, two of the important dependencies, just like with breakpoints, for this idea of waiting for user input are checkpoints and threads. So really in simple terms, what's happening here is that as I run my graph, every graph step can be saved, i.e. the state of the graph and the next nodes to travel to in the graph, can be saved by a checkpointer as a checkpoint. So you can imagine your graph is going along. At every step, you're saving a checkpoint. Those checkpoints are then rolled up into what we call a thread. And this thread is basically a, a kind of a persistent state uh, trajectory of your graph, which you can reference at a later point in time. So for example, if your graph is running, you hit a breakpoint and you stop it, you have a thread that allows you to return to where your graph stopped and proceed. So this is obviously useful in the case of a breakpoint where you're like waiting for human, uh, human approval. And it's useful here uh, if you're actually waiting for user input in the case of like actual clarifying text. So let's actually show this with some code. I'll copy this over. So here's a really simple graph. Our state just contains an input and a user feedback key. We have three steps. We have step one. We have a step that collects our user feedback called human feedback. And we have step three. We've added these. And it's a really simple flow just as shown here. Now you can see I've added a check pointer. We just talked about why that's important. And I've also added this interruption, i.e. this is a breakpoint. I'm going to breakpoint before my human feedback node. So again, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and proceed until I hit human feedback and then I'm going to break. Now let's show this in action. Copy this over. Cool. So here we go. We pass our input. We create a thread. We invoke our graph. So our graph proceeds and we go ahead and hit step one. And now before we hit human feedback, we stop. And then here's what our state is at this point in time. Our state is simply hello world. Now what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna copy over here. So right here, this is just an example where I'm gonna gather feedback from the user. And this is the crux of it. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna call this graph update state I'm going to pass that user input in to um, this update under the key user feedback. So remember, our graph had two keys, input and user feedback. So I can insert that user feedback directly here. That's it. Nice and easy. And here's what's kind of cool. I can actually insert this as a node. So it's as if that human feedback node in my graph is running, and I'm just populating it with feedback gathered from my user. So if you look at my flow here, here's that user feedback node. I'm just gonna run this node and plumb in the feedback I get from the user. And that's what's gonna happen right here. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say, uh, go ahead to step three. Cool. And there we go. So look at my state after the update is hello world and user feedback, go ahead to state to uh, step three. So my state's been updated with that user feedback, which I plumbed in. Um, and now you can see gra this graph.get state next tells me what's the next node I want to go to. Well, what we've done is we've already run that human feedback node right here. And so the next node my graph wants to go to is that third step. So there we go. And now all I need to do, because I have a thread, that's gathered all this information. All I need to do is invoke my graph with that thread. I don't have to pass anything because it knows where to pick up because of that thread. And it just goes to step three. So that's really it. Very simple. 
And if you pop all the way back up, all we've done is we set up a graph. We set up a node called human feedback, which we're going to collect user feedback on and insert it into our state. And all we need to do is very simply set a breakpoint before that node where we stop before we hit this node. And then we just manually call this graph update state. Uh, we pass in the feedback here that we get from the user and we run that as a node human feedback. So it's basically as if this node is running. We update our state accordingly, which we show here. And then we move forward to step three because the thread saves all the prior information. So we're able to pick up where we left off and we can proceed forward. So this is very generally useful. And in particular, if you have graphs where you want to kind of encode places where you can ask clarifying questions or gather more user input along your control flow, this kind of uh, approach of asking for uh, user feedback directly as a node in your graph is extremely useful. Thanks.